This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Hey everybody, it's Lavender Town, and today I'm going to be testing and comparing some of the best animation apps currently available on the iPad. I'm going to be approaching this basically as a beginner. I've been interested in animation for a long time. This is my reel from the college class I took a few years ago. These were all done in a variety of different PC programs like Animate and Toon Boom. And truthfully, I found them so difficult to use that I actually haven't animated since. So I'm really hoping that these apps are more user-friendly and I can start practicing animation again so that my famous birthdays profile is finally right and I can call myself an animator. I wanted to start with Procreate because honestly, I just really love it. And they just added their new animation features to it. It was originally just a drawing program. So I was really excited to see how they would do that. All the animation programs I've worked on in the past have been exclusively for animation. And I was really excited by the idea of a program that's so nice to draw in being animatable, if that makes sense. Um, so I really wanted to take a crack at Procreate first. So basically the way that Procreate integrated animation is they added this little like play bar thing that you could pop out at the bottom. And once you do that, every frame, um, well, no, every layer will be considered a new frame. Um, so basically all you have to do is keep making new layers for each new frame that you want. And it has onion skinning so that you can look back and forward at the frames around the one that you're drawing. And honestly, like that's all you need to really animate um, in the simplest form, onion skinning uh, and being able to have the app uh, understand that you're making different frames is, is all you really need. Um, and realizing that made me really angry about how uh, user unfriendly and how difficult the animation programs I've worked on in the past are because like the simplicity of this truly blew me away. Like I literally haven't animated anything serious in years now and this was just so easy and fun to use. And it being intuitive on this basic level really could be the difference between someone picking up animation seriously or really never touching it again. So it's, I mean, it's really not a petty thing. It's a pretty serious, uh pretty serious factor. Like I, I'm just very excited that animation is becoming more accessible for young people and kids to get into earlier because they're going to be so amazing when they get, get old and like have lots of years of practice. I'm really looking forward to seeing what um, this kind of stuff becoming more accessible is going to do to the art world. But anyway, um, I knew I had to do at a minimum two animations for this video, so I wanted to keep it relatively simple. So my idea for this one is just a character sort of reacting in surprise. I wanted to do a totally frame by frame animation um, with minimal use of any just like transform tools and you know tweening things. I actually don't think that there's really any tweening um, available in the Procreate animation sort of setup, which personally I'm fine with because I can never get tweening to actually work for me. But if it's something that you heavily use, um, then obviously this is not going to work for you necessarily. I don't know if they're planning on adding anything like that. I'm sure that it's possible, but um, I just don't have any information about that to be honest. Um, but I will say that uh, as it is a drawing program first, it is wonderful to use for frame by frame because frame by frame animation is all about just drawing. So when a program is fun and satisfying to use for drawing, it makes frame by frame animation way, way, way more fun. Um, um, in fact, I found myself wanting to make the animation more and more complex just because I was enjoying the time I was spending with it quite a bit. I also would say it's really um, convenient how easy this program is to like cut little pieces out and move them slightly. You can move the anchor points from which things rotate, which is really great for animation because there's things like hair or limbs um, that you really want to be able to just like move that anchor point right to the joint rather than it being in the middle of your selection. Um, it just makes it a lot easier. Uh, honestly, like I was just impressed by all the little things that made the entire process more intuitive. Um, like I said before, I mean, the, it's it's truly the little things in animation because um, it is such a tedious process. Um, and with that in mind, there are a few complaints that I have. The first one is the way that Procreate deals with fill um, tools. I know there's other ways to fill, but the easiest way to fill color is to drag that little circle of color up at the top into the selection that you want. And truthfully, like it works fine, but when you're dealing with anything majorly detailed, like if you were to try and fill in like a checker pattern um, you're just you're moving your um, pen quite a bit and in order to do like the traditional fill bucket where you're just sort of clicking um, you have to like mess with the settings up in the corner um, and I just like yeah I, I think it's all right but it's it could be better um, 
But other than that, there really wasn't anything that was like snagging me or slowing me down significantly. I'd also like to say that like the onion skin works quite well. Um, you can also change the onion skin so that it's a different color if you prefer that to rather than just like gray because sometimes it can be a little bit much. Um, and then the uh, before and after uh, onion skin uh, frames will be different colors, which is really useful if you're getting a little like confused about where everything is. One of the things that really surprised me about the way that Procreate's animation to tools work is that you can click on that settings um, part of the bar and you can change the frame rate like on the fly. Usually you have to do that up front like when you're making the file and then changing it is usually a multi-click um, sort of process and uh, it just it takes a while but <laughs> um, especially if you're trying to do something quickly um, and if you're gonna do something for just like a gif where it doesn't really matter what the frame rate is. Um, I noticed that that actually made it a lot more enjoyable. I could actually try it out at different speeds and this is also useful for someone like me who's really not mastered timing in animation so I can see when things are going super super fast that either I need to slow down the frame rate which I can do and try out and see you know when the pacing feels right and then if I did want to change it up to a 12 frame or a 24 frame per second um, sort of speed I would know about how many frames I need to put in between everything to make it work at the pace that I want um, this seems like a small thing but gosh it's huge to me because this is one of the main things that I really struggled with with animation I would do an animation I'd be paging through it sort of with my mouse or whatever, and I'd be like, oh, this is looking good. And then I'd play it and it would be so out of um, timing and I wouldn't really know how to fix it. It's also remarkably easy to move frames around, which I really, really appreciate as well. All of these things I think really help with someone who's still learning. Um, a lot of the times it's very punishing in these more complex PC programs when you mess up. Um, hours and hours of work can go down the drain because it is so difficult to move things around or try things out. Um, and I feel like these little tweaks make it so much more accessible for someone like myself who's really, really not that skilled yet and needs a lot of help. Um, so I appreciate that a ton. Um, I also am really impressed with how they dealt with layers. Now layers and frames are kind of a difficult thing to deal with in any animation program because usually frames sort of take on the um, space of where layers would go in a illustration program and then when you need multiple layers per frame it becomes um, exponentially more complex. In Procreate either you can do what I did where I just <laughs> basically colored directly into each and every single frame, in which case you don't have to worry about it, or you can use Procreate's already um, like already worked out grouping system where you can group different uh, layers together and then that group will be considered one frame. This is really cool because basically it's the first time I've ever seen a program deal with this in this way where you can have more layers on some frames and less on other frames and like the program doesn't have any problem with that. Um, that's really nice because sometimes in a longer animation like you know maybe a bubble will float by um, or something and then you'll need to have that bubble frame on every single frame of the whole animation um, because the layers are sort of being considered um, the same in every single frame. Uh, but in this one, you can have as many layers or as few layers in each frame as you need for that frame. The last thing I want to talk about Procreate's animation tools is kind of unique and I've honestly never seen it before. So the way that Procreate automatically makes your new layers into frames, unless you're using grouping and stuff, um, makes backgrounds kind of a difficult challenge. So how do you actually deal with that? Well, the way that they dealt with it is basically the first uh, frame and the last frame, you can um, click like long press on them and then an option will come up to designate it as background or foreground. So basically these will copy to every single frame and allow um, you to put background behind them without having to redraw them or copy paste them a whole bunch of times um, and this is really neat I mean the background thing is cool um, it works exactly as it should but I was extra impressed by the foreground idea um, just having that freedom to add something in front of your character without having to really worry about how that's gonna interact with the character itself is a really really cool feature I honestly couldn't figure out how to make this sort of work so now my character looks like they're peeping out of the bushes um, I don't know what they're seeing now 
now, but there's there's a lot of intrigue and scandal added to this animation with this simple addition. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like this would just give you a ton more that you can do. You could have sort of like a parallax, like uh, leaves going out in front of the character and help give the sense of movement and place um, that you really couldn't do without it. Um, so I think that's a really cool feature. I wouldn't have thought to even ask for, but I'm glad it's there. Um, and you don't have to use it, obviously. You could just not designate anything as a foreground element. It's really up to you. Um, but I thought it was a very clever way of dealing with it. You can also um, click on any frame and say to hold it for a certain amount of time. Um, so instead of having to copy and paste to rest on a frame, um, this is sort of in there by default and you can change that very easily without having to delete anything, which is again, just really nice, really intuitive. I'm like obsessed with Procreate. I'm so impressed with them. And I think for $10, it's a really good deal. Now, the second program that I had to try out is Flip a Clip. I've heard so much from you guys about Flip a Clip and a lot of you have asked me to review it, so I'm glad I'm finally getting a chance to. Um, this is a program that's technically free, though I do have some reservations about them calling it free, considering that you can't adjust the amount of onion skinning, nor can you export anything without a watermark um, if you use the free version. I do suppose that it's kind of a brilliant marketing move because then you download it for free, you see how awesome it is, and then you have to get the paid version, but that in mind, the paid version is only six dollars, um, so it's still quite cheap, I would say, for a program of this quality. Uh, again, I found it really, really intuitive. Um, naturally, I was going to find Procreate pretty intuitive because I've used it for drawing in the past, but I've literally never opened Flip a Clip before the footage that you're seeing now, and I really didn't have any trouble like figuring out what to do. I had a few more hiccups figuring out how to like move layers and copy multiple layers and things like that but overall it was still like quite an easy experience and I find that when you're looking up information about how to do something in flip clip people are remarkably um, good at explaining it really quickly without you having to look through some long tutorial or anything for for a long period of time which I really appreciate. Flip a clip also has some distinct advantages that Procreate does not and I wanted to talk about those. The biggest and most important one is that Flip a Clip can use audio. Now there is a ton of different types of animations you can do without having to worry about syncing it up to audio, but a lot you do need audio for. It would be pretty difficult to lip sync a character talking um, to an audio clip if you can't actually scrub the audio clip alongside the animation that you're doing. So if you're planning on doing something like that, Flip a Clip is definitely the better choice right now. I don't know if Procreate plans on adding any audio functionality. It would be pretty wildly outside of what the program is being used for now, so I'm not sure if that's something they're interested in. But as of uh, you know current time, um, this is probably the only uh, iPad program I would recommend if you were trying to do some lip syncing or you know any sort of like character dancing to music or anything. That'd be a bit easier to handle because you just have to make sure that they're on the same beat as the song. But yeah, it would be a lot easier if uh, audio is important to your project to use Flip a Clip. Flip Clip also has a few like cute little features that while I don't think they're particularly necessary, I do find them charming. Like you can actually start with a pre-rendered scene already, or you can put a whole variety of different paper textures, which really satisfies me because I really like drawing on a slight paper texture. I think I've just burnt out my eyes on that pure white um, canvas background that we usually see when we open Photoshop or uh, Clip Studio Paint or whatever. Um, it's nice to just start with something that has a little bit more, um, a little softer and a little bit more personality, you know what I mean? <laughs> Flip Clip also uses the standard style of um, merging together frames and layers where every layer that you add will be represented on every frame. Um, it is kind of nice because the way that it works, it automatically knows that you're going to want to change it every frame so um, it doesn't carry it over like a Flash does where you, if you add another layer and then you add like a blob of purple to fill in the purple hair in one frame, they're going to keep that blob of purple all the way across until you start cutting it up. Um, so that was just like a little quality of life thing that I appreciated. Um, and uh, basically, yeah, this this whole process was pretty enjoyable in Flip a Clip. The only part that I liked considerably less than the way that Procreate is working is the moving around and copying of frames. Um, it's possible just that I'm so used to Procreate that uh, it made it so much easier for me to use that. Um, so I don't want to give it too much of a hard time, but you do have to go into like this little separate 
frame selector and um, if you want to move stuff around you got to do a variety of like long presses and like clicking on clipboards and things like that to make sure you're copying the right stuff it's not a big deal and I bet if you used it a lot this would be a total no-brainer um, but I will say that I think procreate wins uh, the sort of intuitive intuitive factor um, just a little bit there the other small thing I prefer in procreate is that I think procreate makes exporting a little bit easier. You can export an animated GIF, animated PNG, or an MP4 video in Procreate. And I do think it's possible to export a GIF in Flip a Clip, but it's not very clear where or how. Um, so the way I exported this one was as an MP4, and that worked just fine. Um, but if you wanna make PNGs and GIFs really easily, Procreate makes that just a little bit easier. But overall, I do think that Flip a Clip has to be considered the superior animation program simply because it's capable of dealing with audio. But honestly, you would be spending your money well no matter which one you get. They are shockingly cheap compared to their PC equivalents, literally orders of magnitude more affordable. So honestly, you could really just get both pay $16 and have two really wonderful um, apps that you can use to make tons of animations. And if you want to sharpen up your animation skills, you should probably check out Skillshare. Skillshare seriously is one of the best places I've ever seen to like learn anything, especially anything creative. Their animation tab is like bursting with classes, one of which I'm actually taking right now. This is a uh, animation class about using Procreate. Um, so I thought it would really be perfect. And I mean, look how charming her illustrations are. It's just, it's really inspiring to watch people who are so good at what they do, really breaking it down and making it accessible for everyone. And they don't just have class on animation, of course. They also have manga classes or classes on lifestyle stuff or business analytics. It's basically a dream come true for a freelance artist. <laughs> Learning alongside other creatives who just want to improve their skills and better themselves is really inspiring and it's a good way to start 2020, I think. And with an annual membership, Skillshare is less than $10 a month. Check out the link in the description and you can get two months of premium membership for free. So go try it out and explore your creativity. Special thanks to my patrons, including Arararararahu, Bella Story, Braggy, Kalpon Ponch, Lion, Clockwork Construct, Dr. Casket, Alaria Lou, Elizabeth Alvin, Gray the Animator, Yara Formoso, Ivan Rodriguez, JJJ, Joseph Copel, Le Blah Blah Blah, Micah Dactyl, Mr. Dr. Pants, Nora Cornelson, Ollie, Pixel Badlands, Rosie Warlock, Rudy, Sergeant Pendulum, Some Mediocre Artists, The Artsy Moose, Tom Javid Johansson, Yaboy ST, and Zoe Stardust. <laughs>